Over the course of a weekend, we got up close and personal with the Italian Trump, Matteo Salvini. You want one? Yeah, yeah. Team Salvini are now in government with coalition partners. The annual Lega party get-together is different this year. Part political rally, part festival, lungs full with the oxygen of power. <laughs> Salvini is interior minister, but considered Italy's most powerful politician. He's also positioning himself as Europe's populist in chief. He started off as a teenage activist in the party, belonged to a small communist faction of the Northern League. When you were a communist back in your 20s, what was the, what was the festival scene like? Da giovani al liceo è sano essere di sinistra, poi uno comincia a lavorare, a conoscere la vita reale e smette di essere di sinistra e torna con i piedi per terra. The first thing to understand about Italy's anti-immigration party is that they're not just about immigration. Their original raison d'etre, independence for Italy's northern regions. The party used to be called the Northern League. The T-shirts read, defend identity. These men from the Veneto region in the northeast. For years, it was a fringe party, beset by financial corruption scandals, paralyzed by alliances with Berlusconi, almost irrelevant. Q Salvini, a rebrand and the migrant crisis. Two years ago, for example, there were over 180,000 arrivals to Italy by sea. So far this year, around 18,000 have arrived, a fraction of what it once was. You must be very happy that the number of migrants are down so much. I mean, it's amazing, isn't it? Why, why do you think that's happened? Why are the numbers down by so much? Perché meno gente parte, meno gente muore, poi in Italia abbiamo già troppi problemi per ospitare altre centinaia di migliaia di immigrati e stiamo finalmente collaborando seriamente con la Libia, spero di farlo presto con la Tunisia, con l'Egitto, con i paesi del Sahel per evitare che questa gente parta. He's a, our deputy, member of Italian Parliament and a fisherman. <laughs> Is that right? Lega's anti-immigration rhetoric is an extension of its narrative around belonging. Belonging to autonomous Italian regions. Belonging to a family. For years now, Europe's populists have been developing the most potent form of political capital. A community. Yeah. And what does that family, what does that community stand for? What brings it together, as far as you're concerned? L'amicizia, la concretezza, la competenza e il fatto che siamo cresciuti insieme. Siamo probabilmente l'ultimo partito rimasto in Italia che, che fa scuola, che organizza e quindi ci sono valori ma c'è anche una struttura. Qua i ragazzi che stasera bevono birra e fan festa però eh, sono laureati, sono amministratori locali, quindi è il bello di unire la politica al vivere insieme. Sono ragazzi che si sono sposati, che hanno fatto dei figli, che... quindi è una famiglia, una comunità. The tensions arise around exactly who is allowed to belong. Hello, salve. So, for example, this is Lega's new Minister for Families and Disability, Lorenzo Fontana. Do you think that gay couples can form loving nuclear families? Well, now in Italy we don't have this question. Because no, but I'm asking you the question. No, though. no, ah, okay. No, yeah. for, me, for me the family is only for, from uh, men and women. Yeah. And so you, you, don't think that, you don't think that a gay couple can form a loving nuclear family? Not family. These are, of course, views shared by many Italian Catholics, which throws up another possible tension for the party. The pro-refugee, pro-migrant, Pope. The Pope's narrative is very different to your narrative around migrants, isn't it? I don't think so, because uh, he said uh, recently that uh, it's a European problem and we can that 
this is a European problem. I think that uh, we don't have so much uh, different in our vision. Yes, then the Pope is the Pope. I, I, I think that's and a little bit, though, he does, though, and, doesn't uh, he? I mean, this is a pro-immigrant Pope. I, pro, no, he's a pro-defend the refugees. Yeah. And it's different. Before the main event the following day, still time for more selfies. Because with every picture shared a message, there's no barriers between us and the ordinary Italians we prioritize. Far cadere il muro di Berlino una volta sarebbe stato impensabile. During his speech, Salvini talks about a new international alliance of European populists. The party says it wants Italy to stay in the European Union, but in a reformed EU, in the way you would reform a derelict house with a bulldozer. Far cadere il muro di Berlino una volta sarebbe stato impensabile. E il prossimo muro che facciamo cadere è quello di Bruxelles, restituendo ai popoli europei il diritto al lavoro, il diritto alla vita, il diritto alla salute, il diritto alla sicurezza. Il muro di Bruxelles. Non dico a colpi di ruspa, se no dicono che sono cattivo. Oh my God! And at night, the youth wing hammer home the internationalism of the new nationalism. We are against the Islamization of Europe and the Islamization of UK. Uh, Birmingham, Manchester, London. Rotterdam. London is London. It's not Londonistan. London is London. The London of Churchill. What you actually mean is the London of white people, the London of Christians. That's what you mean. Isn't that right? The London of Magna Carta. Yeah. Don't so the London like... of Islamization and the Sharia. If but... necessary, expulsion of Islamization, Islam people in, from the London if necessary. Not the UK, from a Sadiq Khan and the acid attack, uh, Rotterdam, and also the London and uh, the UK who uh, made Tommy Robinson a political prisoner. Another recurring theme here, a sense of grievance directed at politicians and journalists who they feel just don't get it. If you try to read uh, some newspaper in Italy, yeah, some newspaper yeah. around the world, you say that Salvini is a Nazist. It's the same way Trump supporters talk about being victims. Yeah. Um, Salvini supporters talk yeah. about being victims. Yeah, because but if you're such victims, why are you in charge? Yes, because America because people is, not... is enough. Because people are tired. From the food to the flags, this is the politics of place. The politics of belonging. The premise, if you don't belong anywhere, you belong nowhere. And you definitely don't belong here. On tomorrow's programme, what does Italy's new anti-immigration government mean for people actually arriving by sea? We follow one Nigerian migrant in Salvini's new Italy. We'll be on the road with Elvis. Madame, show me a four news, and a four news, come on, get you. <laughs> well, to discuss the rise of populism in Italy and elsewhere in Europe, I'm joined by Matthew Goodwin, who is an author and commentator, and the political commentator Nina Schick. So we, we note the rise of populism, but should we be worried about it? Well, populism's been with us a long time. Uh, it's older than liberal democracy. Um, and it's an ideology in its own right that can align itself with different movements. And sometimes, as we saw in that clip, it can be pretty uh, nasty. But it is also fundamentally something that can act as a corrective in democracy. It can pull our political systems back when perhaps they've lost touch with certain groups and they're not listening to grievances. So we shouldn't be worried about it? Well, I mean, in general terms, uh, you know, it's something that can remind us that certain people don't feel that they're at the table. So, Nina Schick, it's a corrective. We absolutely should be worried about it. I agree with Matthew that it can be a corrective, but I think the far bigger issue that we need to 
contend with is that at its heart, it's illiberal. What is populism? Populism is the good people versus the elite. And populist leaders say, you know, they're gonna take the will of the people. So by its very nature, it's exclusionary. It doesn't allow for political opposition. Well, you could argue we, it's by the will of the people. It's it's for yeah, but the, it, it's popular. But that's illiberal democracy because essentially what you're doing is taking a very majoritarian view of democracy, right? So if the will of the people means 52% of a country believe in something, there's no room for compromise. And we see that in Italy. What does that mean for the migrants, people who do not stand with Lega Nord, people who do not stand with the Five Star Movement? You basically strip any debate or compromise from your politics and society and you create polarized and very dangerous societies where I think the fundamental values of liberal democracy are stripped away. And we not only see this in Europe, but we see it across the Western world. And I think that is a slide towards tyranny and authoritarianism. That's a good one. Well, I think one of the problems that we have in this debate is you say, you know, populism is evil and everybody who supports these movements is anti-democratic or is a liberal. And by extension of that, we really demonize those groups and we make them feel even more sidelined in our discussion. The reality of what we're seeing in the West more generally, we're not seeing a battle over should we have democracy. Democracy's won. Uh, liberalism in broad terms has won. Support for um, interracial marriage, support for same-sex uh, uh, relationships, support for the fundamentals of democracy. Should we live in a democracy? Do I want to live in a democracy? Am I happy to live in a democracy? All those things have really been, been won. Um, what we're having a debate over is what type of democracy do we want to live in? A liberal democracy or perhaps a democracy that gives people a little bit more say over the decisions but that affect their daily lives? You see in Park's film, I, 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 sorry, I, I, just one second, you see in Park's film these familiar themes of distrust of institutions, distrust of government, fake news. You know, is that ever healthy for democracy or it's, is that a danger? It's not healthy and I also have to say that I fundamentally disagree with the contention that the fundamental values of democracy have been won and there's no rowing back. You already see with the rise of perhaps Donald Trump's populism or even what Lega Nord is saying on rights like women's reproductive rights, on things like gay marriage, those are not fundamental rights that have been won and can never be rowed back on. And in that is indeed a message that you see in many of the far-right populist parties across the EU right now. It's, a, it's a, against multiculturalism. It's against a, a, a society of tolerance. So this, I think, is a very alarming trend. Indeed. And I, think, I, I, I don't think that you can say that if you look at populist leaders who've taken power, whether it's you know, uh, Hugo Chavez in Venezuela to Viktor Orban um, in Hungary, what have they done when they actually come to power? They actually circumvent some of the institutions of the st state which are meant to create checks and balances, balances. Therefore, I think the slide of populism can be very dangerous towards um, democracy. I would only add that if you look at every major survey around the world and you ask people, do you think democracy is a good thing or a bad thing? Typically, over 90% of people say, it's a good system of government, it's how I want to live. Now, they're unhappy with how they feel it's functioning and how it's working, but the big kind of fundamental battle that democracy had with with fascism and then communism, it's won that see, battle. But we see in Porrick's film some of the ugly sides. Well, but, sure, but, but, if, but I, if I showed you a survey of Italian public opinion about, my... about how they feel on the fundamentals, yeah. you, know, they, they would, they, you know, the Italians are not asking for a fascist government. They're not asking wait, for wait, wait, a fundamental wait. overthrow of the system uh, that they've been used to. I mean, if, any, if anything, in the references wait. in that video that you heard, what are they talking about? Uh, they were talking about Magna Carta. They were talking about this sort of great uh, push for people power as they see it. Now, I agree with you on direct democracy. It can be problematic. And that was quite xenophobic as a movement. But the alarmism over populism is also but, troubling. But, like, Lega Nord literally, what has Salvini been saying? He's literally been talking about cleaning the streets of immigrants, right? He's a, as he's so a, a I, my point is, yeah. But I agree with you that people say that they want democracy. Nonetheless, you, we must not be afraid to say that some of these movements, which are outright, in my view, fascist movements who proclaim to be democracy, you have to hold them to account. And especially when you hear them spewing So what do we do when the real fascists turn? That we're going to have to wait <laughs> till the next time we meet.